we are going to play PS1 games on our Android device. Let's go! We need two things to launch PS1 games on our Android device. The first one is the emulator. We are going to use the PlayStation emulator. The second one is the PS1 BIOS file and the final one is PS1 game ROMs. Let's start with the first one. I go to the Play Store, in here I search Dark Station, make sure you install the correct one, which the developer name is Stenzek, and the download of that is plus 1 million. Right now the app is installed and we are going to jump into the settings. I hit on the next. The default theme is follow system, but I set as dark because I actually don't really like the light themes. At the GPU render, which is set right now automatic, if you see any lags while gaming, you need to change it on Balkan. If you didn't see anything, let it be an automatic one. Resolution at scale. 1x is the quality of PS1 games. If you want to improve game quality, you need to increase the number of that. As you can see, it is from 1x up to 16x. I set it 3x, which is 720p. And that is enough because we are going to play with our smartphones. If I, for example, set it as 4K, I actually don't see any huge upgrades on my device, but maybe I will see lags. I recommend you to set 3x. Aspect ratio is a personal thing. I rather not to change it, but if you want, you can set it on auto game native or auto match display because I want to see and feel the original PS1 game escape. Emulation screen orientation. I'm going to set it as landscape. Always it will be set as landscape because we are going to play on landscape mode not on the portrait mode. If you enable expand to cut that area it means that your game it will be full screen and you will see games even in notch area. I actually don't really like that I disable it. I recommend you to enable widescreen hack. In some games it will be useful and the game it will be full screen. On this part you need to import your BIOS file. If you have a PS1 you need to extract your BIOS file from that console but if you don't have it you need to find it on anywhere that in here I press import BIOS file. You will need PSX and psb 660bin file. This file is a region free, you can play any region games. And this one is the file that PS1 used to emulate PS1 games on PSP. I set it and press on the OK. Hit on the next. Here you need to choose the game directories. Actually, I recommend you to put all of your PS1 games in a folder and choose that folder. For example, for me, I have a folder which I type PS1 games. I select that folder and press on the allow because you need to give the permission if you have ps1 games in another directory you need to press on plus and choose another directory but i recommend you to put all of your ps1 games in a single folder i press on next and right now the setup is complete i'm going to press on finish and test the game as you can see i only have taken three game because it is a ps1 emulator it will take times to launch the game it's going to be boot on the normal speed of ps1 okay Oof. The game is done, I hit on the pause, if I want I can save this asset, hit on save asset, choose an empty box, I actually save the asset manually for well. myself, in here if I hit on load asset, I can load that asset, this is manual save, not the auto save that the emulator did for you. I hit on exit game, if I again click on that, if I press on load asset, that's the auto save that DocuStation did for us, not our manual save. Now it's the time to set up controllers. It doesn't matter that you have Xbox controller, PS1 controller, or any kind of unknown brand USB controllers. As an example, I have a USB unknown brand controller. I'm going to connect that by using OTG. Okay, right now I connect my controller using OTG. On settings, you need to go to the touch screen. And on touch screen, control view, I set it as none. On port 1, I'm going to choose analog control dual shock and press on perform automatic mapping. Right now, the auto mapping is done the scroll and as you can see for example for triangle nothing is going to compare click on the triangle button press triangle on your controller for circle too okay right now it's the time to enable fast wow. press on back button on your device go to the settings you need to go to the system in here you need to set fast forward speed and turbo speed on for example 200x right now it is unlimited but if you set it on 200x as an example the game it will be become fast and you will see some text, some effects and you will know what is going on. For that I recommend you to set it on 
200 is. When you scroll, you will see CPU overclocking and underclock. If PC lags while gaming, I recommend you to set the CPU at 75%, which is underclock. If you see any lags, underclock your CPU. If you want to know more about underclocking and overclocking, watch this video that is going to appear in here. This is for PS2 emulator tutorial, but I actually told lots of things about underclocking and overclocking. On graphic part, you will have the graphic settings which we had at the first type of setup. Let's go to here. As an example, if I enable this one. Okay, I should don't like that and go to the graphic. Disable the stretch to fit. Don't change anything on audio and here we have achievements if, if you want to enable achievements you need to create an account on retrogaming.info and login in here if you don't have any accounts in here you need to sign up but i actually have an account i need to press on sign in this is my username and this is my password go to account press on login you need to type your username and password on game list if you want you can add another game list on memory cards you will see your memory cards you can create a memory card you can import it from for example your pc you can export it you can do many things in memory card option on bios we told everything about the bios and on advanced part if you have a screen tearing you need to enable video sync and sync to hot refresh rate on interface part you need to enable fast boot because if you disable it you won't see actually any games if you scroll you will see show fps and show emulation speed i'm going to enable them and as you can see they will appear at the top of the screen here we will see the game speed video frame and the game frame Right now the game speed is on 100% which is pretty good. If this game speed becomes less than 90 or 80, the color of that becomes red and you will see lags while playing. So you need to underclock your CPU. On interface, I need to disable show FPS and show emulation speed. Now it's the time to add some hotkeys. Okay, I click on the back, click on this joystick button, go to the hotkeys this is the hotkeys I'm going to set. First one is the fast forward L3 plus R2. Save state number one and load state number one. I'm going to set save state number one, R3 plus X and load state number one, R3 plus shoot. To add cover arts, you need to line click on your game. In here, press choose cover image and choose an image. You can do it in another way. You need to click on the snap bar, download covers, paste this URL which is available on the description and click on the download with this way you can also add image covers if you want you can watch this video too on that one i'm going to tell you how to launch ps1 games and pc see you at the next one